this episode, we look at a cold frame, why you should have one and how they work. My cold frame's a little bit different. It's got a steeper angle and it's also a little bit taller. Cold frame's very useful. This was built in March this year. In future years, I'll build it in November and I'll keep it frost free. But in April and May, it's the perfect place to store your cuttings and your seedlings as you have too many to stay in your greenhouse. A cold frame allows you a lot more space to store plants, very flexible, and with good ventilation, you can grow just about anything. This unit will be removed in a few weeks and it will not be there for the duration of the summer. It's a great tool, well worth investing in. I designed this to have two pieces of the solar wrap that slide in from each end. This makes it more manageable and easier to handle the sheet. One of the benefits I didn't realize at the time is that when it comes to venting, I can very easily pull one of the sheets at each end and make a gap in the middle of about six inches. And if I lower the ends where the Tyvek home wrap is, then I've got lots of easy ventilation. It worked very well, and I would happily do this again next year. A cold frame allows you to manage the temperature. When it's really cold outside at night, your plant's protected. When it gets hot in the day, you can vent it so they're protected. It's a really good way to make sure that your plants don't get too cold too soon or remain too hot for too long. That way you get fresh, healthy plants. I designed my cold frame with a few changes from the typical structure. Usually they're quite shallow, but I designed mine to have a 45 degree angle. This allowed me to maximize the amount of brick wall that was exposed inside the cold frame. It also meant that I could grow taller plants inside the cold frame, and it gave me a steeper angle to shed snow and rainfall. In late April and early May, we do have threat of a frost, but it's quite minimal. But that cold snap can do a lot of damage to plants. In those temperatures, I've pulled the plastic sheets across the front, but I have not covered up the sides, and the plants have thrived. The radiant heat coming out of the bricks has worked very well, and the plants have not got soft and sappy, as would happen if they stayed in a greenhouse. So these plants, of which there is at least 150 in this cold frame, have had optimal conditions to grow healthy, strong roots, healthy, strong branches. And in the next few weeks, they'll be taken out of the cold frame and they'll be put in the ground. It's a very exciting time once you get into early May when all the propagation that you've been focused on and the seed growing and the cuttings and the divisions you can now start to do something with it. The master plan in your mind starts to come to fruition. This cold frame is really very simple. This is attached to pegs that go in the ground. And this is held captive with posts on the inside and the outside. So this can float. And when you want ventilation, you can put a block in here and a block at the other end, and that gives you half inch inch gap for air to get in there. This technique also means that gravity holds this down and it keeps the plastic tight. Now you see here this rail, this extrusion is on this rail cut at 45 degrees and then this cord slots inside this extrusion and this moves quite freely. Um, just pull that. This is pressure treated lumber. It's 14 feet long. I've got it three feet off the wall. And the whole thing is easy to dismantle. I can take out these screws and in 10 minutes the frame is gone. So let me show you what's inside. The growing conditions inside the cold frame are ideal. Good light, but it, the temperature doesn't spike. Good humidity, good ventilation. So let's see what we have in the cold frame. 
This is Anna Sedantia. This is going to feature quite highly. Great big pink flowers, a couple of inches across. Prolific flower, you can see here, all these buds yet to come. Anna Sedantia. In the back there, I managed to trade some fig cuttings for big, large white dahlias. They were put in there back in early March, so March, April, eight weeks, and they're looking very good. And down here, we've got Aliogni angelogni. Depends how you pronounce it. It has blue flowers. You see the buds just about to come out. This is one of our subjects of the cutting series. You can see here the shoot is taking over quite nicely. The Cochiana elata grandiflora. In the back there's another ginger. This is white. I don't know I spoke about it was orange. We've got crinum. Now this crinum I'm hoping is going to be rather special. It's got a lot more flowers. I'm hoping it flowers this year. Rather a special plant. I got that as a birthday present from my wife, which makes me very happy. And down here, this is Patian's Tinctora. Took some cuttings. Here is the rather scruffy looking mother plant with a few yellow leaves. When that gets planted, it'll be pruned back quite hard and it'll just burst with new growth. And then here are the little pups that came from it. These were cuttings that I took about six weeks ago. Looking very happy and healthy. This plant prefers a bit of shade, so I'm going to put it on the east side of the house so it misses out on full afternoon sun. Now in the back there, you can see the Anasodontia. These were featured in a, a video. Let's keep going. Now in here, this is a tree down here. And it's, it's rather special. What I've managed to do is I planted it in the ground. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can get down there. I planted it in the ground and it started to put out more shoots, which means that it's really happy and healthy. So that won't get lifted in the winter. That'll stay there under this cold frame and that will help protect it. I have high hopes for that plant. You're going to see a lot more about this plant. This is Salvia Amistad absolute first rate 10 out of 10. If you want forever flowers this is it. If you want hummingbirds that's the plant to get. Now this is rather choice. This is a plant called Edgeworthia. Really looking forward to seeing how this grows. Flowers in the springtime, great fragrance. Unusual to find it for sale. You need to hunt it down. Got my mail order. This is a real find. This is called Iacroba. Beautiful white pendulous flowers. And when I bought these, they were less than ten dollars each. And because they were quite small, the nursery sent me two, which I thought was just first rate. So we like that. In the back here, we've got a plant that I feature in the beginning of my videos. This is called Echium, and it likes it dry. So what I did is I cut the bottom out of a pot and made a collar. And then when you put your plant in the collar, the collar sits about six inches taller than the ground level. And that means that it just stays dry. And I think that that looks just exquisite. Don't know how much it will grow this year, but next year it should grow about six feet and be covered in flowers. There we go, we've got more Dahlia. Over here we've got Anagazanthus. Kangaroo's paw. I think that is so beautiful. Very different looking plant. Let's keep going. Oh, very special. This is Cardiocrinum. To find a nice shady spot for that. Huge, gigantic lily, eight feet plus tall. Can't believe I found that. It makes me very happy. 
here you can see we've got this very large palmate leaf. This is Tetrapanax. It grows very fast. In November I'll cut it back. And it'll come out into it'll overwinter as a protected root mass in the ground, and the next spring it'll shoot again. This is Montanoa. I love the foliage. I have big aspirations for that plant. And then here we have a little oddity. This is called this is called Romney Colteri. It's a Californian poppy, and it loves it dry. Huge, big white flowers. And this is planted in the ground, so this is going to stay here. Oh, look at that! You see a little little new shoot growing right there. That's excellent. So this will stay in the ground, and every year it'll get cut back. And there you go. Oh, yes, here's the, the dollar chops. These were potted on a week or so ago. Just hardening nicely out here. And you see we've got, we got new shoots coming. When you grow vines from seed, they always look a bit gangly. It's not until you plant them out that they can really get their roots down and thicken up just by the nature of what they are. So there we go. There is an overview of what is the collection in the cold frame and how I use the cold frame. It has a few plants that will stay in there year round. We've got a, got a fig tree right there. And then we've got a, it's a great space to prepare plants from March through to late April, early May, ready for planting. And being able to take the side off like I just did you can really manage the temperature. Now this winter I will run I think a cable, a soil warming cable on the surface, plug it into a thermo cube and have that keep it frost free. The way that the cold frame works in my situation is that during the daytime this brick wall absorbs a huge amount of heat even in January, February, March, April. It, this takes in the heat. And of course, when the weather's correct, you take the cover off. When the nights get cold and the cover's back on, this wall is giving off heat, and that's the heat source to stop it from freezing. All I want is for this to be frost-free, just like the greenhouse. And the minute you have a frost-free spot and that this is south-facing, opportunities abound. There is so much you can do. In May in Connecticut, everyone goes crazy for plants. But these plants are very difficult to find now. The nurseries have in fact sold out. Because I bought them in February and March, and I was able to take care of them in my greenhouse, I get the choice that I want. Thank you for watching Planted. Please like and subscribe.